Okay, folks, last time we talked about code profiling in general. This time I want to take a look at specifically the GProf profiler, since we've got this on our systems, and it uh, is a nice sort of simple example of analyzing runtime with a profiler. So let's have a go at this. I'll talk through some of the theory for it, and then we'll, uh, we'll play with it in just a, a simple example. So again, it goes through and breaks down how much time is spent in each function or each method as the program runs, um, dumps that into a data file someplace, and then we run gprof to analyze the data. So for this to work, again, we have to recompile the program with special flags telling the compiler to insert the profiling code that gprof is going to make use of. So the specific flag for gprof is this dash pg. Um, there are a couple of others that we have to throw in to get this to work. Uh, the dash no pi, um, clearly obvious, you know, why wouldn't we say no pi? Well, it, this actually, the PIE is for position independent. And so what we're saying, we're telling the compiler not to generate position independent code because that actually messes up the profiling process. And similarly, this dash F no built in is telling the compiler not to try and optimize by picking some of my functions and replacing them with built-in functions or with uh, um, inline functions. So we're, uh, we're just trying to tell the compiler not to do any fancy optimizations because that's going to mess up our profiling code. So if it would have done those optimizations normally, then our profiling analysis isn't going to quite exactly match what the real version would be but we're hoping this is going to be close enough. So we'll go through and compile it. Uh, and maybe we'll go through and do that now. So again, we want to go through and try our, here, let's take a look, oops, take a look at this. So we've got our sorter.cpp that we're going to try and analyze. Um, we'll take a look inside for just a second here. And so our sorter.cpp has got a couple of functions in it. It's got a sorting function, and it's got a few different calls to it. It's going to uh, test our sorter with random data. It's going to test our sorter with uh, sorted data. And it's going to test our, our sorter with backwards sorted data. So when we run sorter, it lets us specify as a command line argument how big a file we're going, how many data values we're going to sort, and it tests with the reversed, it tests with the sorted, and it tests with the random data. So we're really really interested in how long our sorting function takes on these different ideas, and it's just using a dumb old bubble sort. So that's the code we're going to be taking a look at. And again, if we were going to compile it, we use the dash pg flag our no position independent flag and our no built in and i'm just going to put this in it's called our executable sorter oopsie maybe i have to tell it which file we're actually compiling huh how about sorter.cpp yep and how about i actually spell my options correctly there we go okay so we've got it to compile, OK. So let's go back to where we left off. So we've got it to compile. And that new executable has got the code injection material built right into the executable. So when we run sorter, it's going to put information into a data file someplace. So when we run the program, you just run the program normally. You know Whatever arguments it's going to take, just run it absolutely normally. And what it's going to do is dump the profiling information into a log file someplace. And by default, that's actually called gmon.out. So this is going to have all the profiling data in it. And then we'll run the gprof program. And it will grab that file of profiling data and give us an, a rundown of the information, a rundown of the, the profile of the program. So if we give that a try. Let's run our sorter program. Um, we'll run it on just a small data set first. Again, it lets us pick how many data values. So just so you can see what the output winds up looking like. So 
that's just a, a nice simple, it ran, it sorted 10 values backwards sorted, uh, 10 values um, sorted, and uh, 10 values in random order. And it's just going through and telling us how many passes it took during bubble sort. And so it, this is just the information from our sorting routines and testers. What we want to see is how long the program took in each of the different various functions. So we do an ls. We see that it has actually created this gmon.out file. And I imagine this has got some great hideous collection of data. Oh, yeah. So it is a binary file full of the, the data that's going to use. OK. So what we want to do now is to run gprof to analyze that profile data. And we give it the name of the executable that it's doing the analysis for. And I'm going to pipe this into less so that it doesn't just go flying past us here. And so what we see is the profiled information. So it gives you an idea for each of the different functions how long was spent in that. And since we did just a tiny sorting example, it didn't spend <laughs> nothing measurable here. So we'll do a bigger example in just a second so we can get more of an idea of where the time is being spent on this. But just so you've got a bit of an idea of what's going on before we dive back into our discussion here. So you run gprof on the executable. It looks at that gmon.out to figure out what the profiling information is. And again, it spews out this table of information. And there's a couple of pieces in here that are in, of interest. So that first table that we saw just at the top gives you a rundown for each of the functions of you know what percent of the total runtime you spent there, the total number of seconds that were spent in it, including calls to all of the functions that it called, and then the number of seconds spent just inside that one function, you know, not including the other function calls it made, uh, the number of times it got called, the average time per call. Right? So it gives you a breakdown of information about each of the functions. And then there's a second table that we'll look at in a sec that gets further down in the list, where it goes through and gives the timing information based on which functions called a particular function and which, which functions it called. So we'll look at the, the breakdown for that in just a moment. So this gives you a chance, a chance to look at the different behavior depending on how the function was called. The only other thing I wanted to bring up is if we're using gprof with C++ and the standard template library. So it goes through and gprof gives us analysis of you know, how long we spent in each of the different functions. If I'm doing something like using uh, one of the standard template library, you know, lists of ints or something like that, then gprof doesn't just give me an analysis of the functions that are in my code. It goes through and gives me an analysis of all the, you know, dozens or hundreds of different functions from within that standard template library that might also be getting called. So that tends to really clutter up the output that we're producing. And so usually if you're going to do this sort of thing, what you'll do is take the output from gprof, and then we'll go through and filter out as many of the lines of rubbish as we can to get just the information on the functions we're interested in. So the easiest way to go through is if you just use a grep for a few of the different keywords that come up in those STL functions and get rid of those. So maybe you pipe your all of the gprof output into grep-v, so that's saying remove all the lines that have this keyword in it. So remove all the lines that have the STD in it. So we're getting rid of all the you know STD couts type of thing. And then remove all the ones that have got the keyword static. And remove all the ones that have got CXX. So you just go through, maybe the first time you run it, have a look at what are the common keywords that are cluttering up your input, or your output rather. And uh, just go through and get rid of them. And you should be left with more or less reasonable output. Now the example we're looking at isn't using the uh, the STL, so it, we won't have that clutter to deal with. All right, so let's do this again with a bigger sorting example. So let's run our sorter on, uh, I don't know, let's make it 10,000 values here. I don't know how long this is going to take to run. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, 
So we went through the same sort of idea, but it's using 10,000 numbers to sort for each of those three runs. And we've, our Gmon actually has been um, updated. So it's got the new profiling information. So if we run our gprof on our dot sorter now, we'll get the updated information. And hopefully we can actually see some measurable time for at least some of the functions in there. Right. So it goes through and it tells you how often each function was called, how many seconds or um, the number of, where are we here, uh, what percentage of time was spent in each of them. And again, your numbers aren't always going to add up exactly right, but it's going to be pretty darn close. The total number of seconds spent in things, the number of seconds spent in any individual function. And of course, in this particular example, <laughs> the overwhelming majority of the time is spent in the sorting function. So no big surprise there, but you get a breakdown of how long is spent in each of these things. Right? So the self is just how long was spent in that one individual function. So essentially there's no measurable time spent in any of the rest of these. Um, the time spent in the function plus all of the things that it called. So now when we see test random, since it called sort, we see all of the time from sort as well. So you get this breakdown of how much time was spent in all of this stuff. So the second set of tables further down the road here is where it breaks things down by function. So it'll have one function that's sort of off to the, the left here, and then all of the rest of them are indented a little ways, if you like. So this is the function that this particular chunk of the table is analyzing. So for the analysis of main, we're looking at an analysis of main where it called these other three functions. And then you'll see another one down here that's an analysis of sort as it was called from the three other functions. Right, an analysis of test random, it was called from main and it called these others. All right, so you get breakdowns of the individual functions, what, what led up to them and what did they wind up calling afterwards. So it just gives you a different breakdown on the data that you can use to get more pertinent information about any one specific function. Right, you can see print was called from the three different test routines. And so you get a bit of an idea of what was going on. All right, an idea of how often it was called from each of those different routines. So we will have a play with the profiler as part of the, I uh, can't remember which lab, but one of our labs coming up for the project. We'll play with the, the Gprof profiler. Um, we'll probably play with the Valgrind one as well. So our next session, we'll take a look at Valgrind. All right, I will leave it there for now.